Hi and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow here with LGRS. Today I have a fab technique to show you. We'll be making a six by six card in blues and reds. We're gonna make this willow pattern cat here and I'm gonna show you how to watercolor using your distress ink and just an aqua painter. It's a minimal supplies but for maximum impact. There's some nice spots of red. I'm gonna show you some tips for gluing on flowers. Plus we're gonna use this gorgeous frame as well. So as always, lots to show you, so let's get started. So this is the stamp set we're going to be using. It's called Claudia, which I think is a great little pun there. It includes all the matching dies as well for some tags that fit the sentiments. Uh, you've got this one that fits these little flowers and you have the big die that fits the cat as well, which we'll be using shortly. There's also some great sentiments in here, plus there's some claws, there's butterfly flower that can be chasing, some extra flowers if you want to pop one up and some great uh, cat based sentiments as well. Plus of course you could use them if you had dog stamps and things as well with the perfection and things like that. So as soon as I saw this cat, I thought of my grandparents' willow pattern china. So that's what I decided that I was going to emulate with today's card. And here is the panel that I've already stamped out. So I stamped this on watercolor paper, but I wanted quite a smooth um, texture rather than uh, something really sort of uh, with the cold press. So I actually stamped it on the back, uh, which means you can still add water, but um, it's much easier to work with. I also have here my new Prima uh, Aqua Painters. So I used these when I was down in Phoenix, absolutely loved them, was really happy with them. So I ordered myself a set. And this one is brand new, it's a little bit crusty. So you just put some water through it, put it onto a piece of kitchen towel and now it's nice and soft. And you want to work with quite a dry uh, paintbrush. So I'm going to dry it off quite a lot on my kitchen towel. And I've already stamped this out using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Blueprint Sketch. All of these stamps are red rubber on a cling and they're super sticky cling as well. Plus everything's printed on the back here so it's really convenient and easy to use. Now to do this, I'm gonna do, as I say, just a very um, light water touch and making it into that willow pattern style. When I activate the Distress Ink with water, it is going to behave like a watercolor. So I'm going to pick certain areas, and I really do want quite a dry brush for some of this. And I'm going to fill it in with some of that blue color. So we almost get a monochromatic card in shades of blue. And we'll do the same on some of her paws. And round her eyes. And I think this is going to come out so pretty. Really simple technique but I think a very effective card. So whether you've got cat lovers, maybe, um, I know lots of people collect the willow pattern china, so you might find someone who has that. You may just find someone who you think that this elegant sort of card would be perfect for. Of course, you could do it in reds or yellows or oranges. So whatever that person's favorite color is, this is a very adaptable technique. So we're gonna do the roses in her cheeks. We're gonna do this piece in here. You can see how easy this is and how light of a touch I am using. This painter is really nice, it's got a super fine tip on it. You can get them in variety packs of two or three depending what size of tip you'd like. I'm also going to pick out some of these leaves. And I love a monochromatic card, sometimes it's just perfect and uh, I might finish it off with a pop of red, maybe a red sentiment, something just to really offset it. So I'm just finishing up this panel. Then I'm going to do the same on these circles, I'm going to fill them in. And you don't need to add any additional ink, just depending on how much water you use depends on how light of a colour you're going to get. But you can see here there's a huge amount of ink already on here. I really don't need to be adding any more. And I'm picking out some of these dots in the butterflies. Just a few of these details, a little bit in the middle, just to make that a bit more solid. Again, I'm going to pick out these same leaves. And just going backwards and forwards if you had too much and you wanted to pick some out, just grab a cotton bud and you can mop some of that water up. But I really don't recommend adding too much water in. That little bit that I added on my brush in the first place is absolutely enough. I'm 
you can see I'm just tucking one side of the, I think it's almost like a sheath of wheat or maybe a leaf. And then the other side. I've also seen this cat done in some really bright colours that looked awesome too. So really a versatile stamp. And of course we'll be showing you more ideas with them very soon as well. Always like to show you more than one idea per stamp set. And I'm just filling in some of these areas in the tail, tip of the tail. You could also pick some of it out. There's um, a Wedgwood Blue Nouveau Drop. You could grab some of that and fill that in too. And again, I do some of these stripes too. I think you can really see how this is coming together. I'm going to do this wheat sheaf down the middle or leaf. I'm just using some very feathery brush strokes. Okay. So now I am going to cut out our cat. I already have my die here ready to go. I'm going to carefully place her on top. So with the LDRS dies, you want to make sure you can see the outline of your creature or flower whatever you happen to be die cutting, and then you know you'll get that perfect outline when you die cut. Using a piece of my Tamiya masking tape, and I'm running this through my Vagabond, which is just next to me here. Like so. And I'm just grabbing it from the other side. Even though it's a thicker cardstock, it's cut it out absolutely perfectly. I think she looks absolutely gorgeous there. I've also pre-cut my card bases ready to go. So this is what I have here. Let's take my kitchen towel away. So I've used the Majestic Frames dies. So you get this gorgeous frame, which I've cut out here in the blue. I think it's absolutely stunning. You also get this rounded piece that you can either cut out in the middle there to complete the frame, or you can make this piece to go on top as I have done here. You get these crown sort of toppers and corners and things to mount it up as well. And I have pre-cut a piece of 12 by 12 craft cardstock in half. So this is down to six by 12 inches. And it looks like I cut it slightly on the slant, but I'll tidy that up in a second. I'm going to use my bone folder. And at the minute I'm trialing a Teflon, Teflon bone folder and I shall report back on that to you. I'm also going to grab cutter here. I'm just going to neaten that edge up. Like so. And that cuts through all of those layers because it's a rotary base cutter. Now I'm going to open this up and we can mount up our pieces. So first of all I am going to mount down my frame. I'm actually going to just put adhesive in this middle panel here. And I'm using the Tonic Funky Tape. And you might also be able to see there's some embossed details in here. I'll try to get some pictures of those, which of course will be at the end of the video and on the blog as well. Do check out the LDRS blog that is linked under this video. There'll be more pictures, inspiration, supply lists, all that fun stuff will be there for you. And for this, I'm going to pop her up on some foam tape. Some foam pieces on the back there. I love how this shines through that craft cardstock. I think it's absolutely perfect. Okay. So now there is our finished card. I'm just going to go and grab some red embellishments. So I've grabbed some red ribbon out of my stash because I really think that will offset this nicely. So first of all I'm going to tie a bow along this edge here. Sometimes just a bow is enough to offset a card. Also, if you have someone's spare finger to put there, you may find tying it easier. But I start with a knot, like this, and then make my bow, and you want your loops, or I want my loops on this top side, so I'm going under rather than over the top. And we do have a special video on how to tie the perfect bow. 
if you're looking for some tips. I'm going to do that again. And I have these ribbon scissors. I only use these for ribbon. Super sharp, and you can see how nice a sharp edge that gives as well. So we'll add that on. And I also want to add a couple of flowers here. And I'm just using a really pair, sharp pair of snips. I picked these up all over the place, dolls house shows, um, big box stores, a few online, but I've got lots of different flowers here. So I'm going to pick these three nice roses and I'm grabbing some uh, glossy accents to stick it on with as well. So we have lots of options when it comes to the flowers. We could maybe put one on each of these panels here, like this. Maybe we even need a fourth one. Not sure that's going to fit over her ear. We could do a pretty little cluster down here. I think I'm going to do it by putting it just on those three places there. So let me grab that glossy accents out of my drawer. And this one's a bit of an older one. I'm going to put a blob down. And this dries clear, so don't worry if some of it comes over. But glossy accents makes an awesome adhesive. I'll put one there. So as well as adding nice glistening details to your cards, you can also use it as an adhesive. Put another blob down here. And I'm just looking for any way I can make this bud a little bit smaller. I'm going to try and just poke this behind her ear, just to even it up. Like so. So I'm going to leave that to dry probably for about 10 to 15 minutes. And you can see on your screen how it came out. Isn't she pretty? I think she really does emulate that willow pattern idea. I've left my sentiment blank, but I probably will add one in a red ink on a tag that I'll add to that ribbon when I'm ready to send out my card. I often do that, just leave it blank and I have some sentiments ready to go when I want to send out a card. Thank you so much for joining me here at LDRS today. Do check out the blog post link below the video. Of course, all your supply lists and everything are there as well. And I will see you again very soon for some more design inspiration. Happy stamping. Bye.